to Sweden, said Mazda, and I was expecting to drive an SUV, perhaps the new CX-30. But no, I'm going to be driving an MX-5 in two litre, guys. So what am I going to be doing with it? Well, I'm going to be driving from Lulea in Sweden all the way up to the Nordkap, a distance of 860 kilometres. And all I've got are some studded tyres, a walkie-talkie and a bottle of water. Wish me luck. That's right, we'd be starting in Lulea, a seemingly quiet Swedish town, but in actual fact, a powerhouse for Steel and Facebook servers, up through northern Sweden, into Finland, and then Norway, and plunge onto the North Cape, the most northerly point in Europe accessible with a car. So why aren't I doing this colossal 860 kilometre trip in an SUV? Well, that'd be boring, wouldn't it? Four-wheel drive, sort of massaging seats, a roof. That'd be just too predictable, wouldn't it? Now, the Mazda MX-5, as we know, is the perfect sports car. It's perfect on a summer's day in Britain. And I wanted to find out what it's like in these Arctic conditions in Lapland. And we've got 860 kilometres to find out whether it's a good sports car in these kind of conditions. And like I've said earlier on, all we've got is some spiked tyres and a bottle of water and a radio. What could possibly go wrong? I'll be honest, 860 kilometres or 534 miles doesn't sound that daunting. And at first, it didn't seem daunting at all. I didn't think I'd come to miss Lolea's quiet yet formal character, but as I headed north, the realisation that it might not be an easy trip soon dawned on me. But before that, it's worth pausing and thinking about the car. The MX-5 is a fixture of our motoring landscape, loved and derided in equal measure. It's been around for a remarkable 30 years and has a million sales to its name. The only people who love the MX-5 more than we Brits is Mazda itself. Much like the 911 is to Porsche, the MX-5 is central to Mazda's ethos. Like the best stories, the MX-5 started purely by chance. An American called Bob Hall embarked on a new career as a car journalist in the late 1970s. Emissions regulations and America's paranoia around safety had all but killed off the market for sports cars. Indeed, there were rumours convertibles would be banned altogether. Hall was a car guy, and he had noticed how Mazda created sporting cars powered by rotary engines. He wondered if there was a way Mazda could put its current technology enthusiasm for sports cars into a simple, typically British-style roadster. On one trip to Mazda's head office in Hiroshima in April 1979, Hall met with head of R&D Kenichi Yamamoto and told him of his idea. Using a chalkboard to sketch out a two-seater sports car, Hall explained how easy it would be to take a Mazda 323 platform, which was front-engined and rear-wheel drive, and clothe it in a sports car body. To persuade him even further, Hall told Yamamoto to take a drive in a Triumph Spitfire. He did, and the project that would become the MX-5 began. Fast forward to 1983 and Yamamoto was now president of Mazda. He knew Mazda had to enter more markets to drive profitability, so he greenlit a new K-car, an MPV and a new sports car, a car that would become the MX-5. With a global trend for big, powerful and often front-engined front-wheel drive convertibles appearing on the market, the MX-5 stood out. 
Mazda's USA design team won the job of designing it in 1984. By December, the mock-ups began and with a little help from an engineering company in Britain, the first working prototype was built a year later. Finished in red with a black roof, the car was taken to Santa Barbara in America for testing. And from here on in, the MX-5 program carried on unabated until its launch at the 1989 Chicago Auto Show. The world went mad for it. The MX-5 was designed for sun-loving Californians, petrolhead Japanese and nostalgic Brits, not for the Arctic Circle. Two hours into my journey and despite strong sunlight to crisp blue skies, the Mercury hits minus 21. Swedes in their Volvos decked out in spot lamps and chunky off-road tyres look on aghast. A fuel stop in northern Sweden allowed the petrol station owner to shout out, you're mad, before trudging in snow boots back to his central heated shop. By the time I reach the border with Finland, I'm starting to think I'm mad too. The temperature has slumped to minus 26, but still the little Mazda carries on in a similar way it would on a British B road on a summer's day. The key are those studded soft compound tyres that bite into the snow and ice while the traction control keeps things steady, but only when you want it to. As I plough through Finland and into Norway, the temperature goes up, but so does the danger. To get to the North Cape, I need to use Norway's system of roads that bend around and traverse its fjords. Before long, the snow is falling thick and fast. The tunnels cut into the mountains along the murky fjords offer a brief respite from the weather. At one point, all there is to guide me are fluorescent orange markers at the sides of the roads roads that could be mistaken for ski runs in the Alps. The MX-5's lightweight body actually does a good job at scything through the snow. The delicate steering gives invaluable accuracy and all the time the peppy engine kicks the tail wide on each corner, just enough to keep the car balanced. I finally reach Honigsvarg, the last town before the North Cape, and a place that in the summer is thronging with tourists. Today, it's eerily quiet and before long, I'm heading out into the main road, the road to the North Cape. It's a road that can only be used if you're following a snowplow. They not only clear the snow for you, but they act as your guide. And then we reach it. Named by an English sailor in 1553, the North Cape is the last point on the mainland and has been a point of pilgrimage for travelers for centuries and it marks the end of my epic drive. So here we are then, 860 kilometers later, and I'm the most northerly person in Europe with a car. And what a car this is, what with its studded tires, this car has been able to do everything. It's really, really surprised me. Now the MX-5 has been top dog for 30 years, and I can't see that changing anytime soon. Thanks for watching.